All right, so in this problem, I have eight to the power of x is equal to 16. So I wanna find the value of x here. So for my solution, I'm going to start by rewriting my equation here. So my equation is eight to the power of x is equal to 16. Now, before we start doing anything, let's just inspect this problem real quick. So if I plug in x equals one into this equation, I get eight to the power of one is equal to 16, which eight to the power of one is the same thing as eight, so I get eight equals 16, which is false, right? Now if I plug in x equals two, I get eight to the power of two is equal to 16, and eight to the power of two is 64. So I get 64 equals 16. And notice how there's a big gap between eight and 64. So we know that the value of x is not gonna be a whole number but a decimal, and it's gonna be somewhere in between one and two. So x is greater than one, but less than two. We know this. Now, how are we gonna actually solve this problem and find the exact value of x? Well, what I can do is rewrite 16 as eight times two. Now what I'm gonna do is divide both sides by eight. So then these two cancel out and I get eight to the power of x over eight is equal to two. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So a to the power of x over a to the power of one is equal to a to the power of x minus one, which is equal to two. Now, a is the same thing as two to the power of three, so I get two to the power of three to the power of x minus one is equal to two. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So two to the power of three to the power of x minus one is the same thing as two to the power of three times x minus one. And three times x minus one, I can distribute three, so I get two to the power of three x minus three is equal to two. And two is the same thing as two to the power of one. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So this means that 3x minus 3 is equal to 1. And now if I add 3 on both sides, I get 3x is equal to 4, and x is equal to 4 over 3. Now, there actually is another way to solve this problem. What I can also do is, at the start, rewrite both of these in bases of 2. So 8 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3, so I get 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x, and 16 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 4. Now this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3x is equal to 2 to the power of 4, meaning that 3x is equal to 4, and x is equal to 4, to 4 over 3. So this is a much simpler method of solving this problem. So, in this video, I'm going to solve the problem 2 to the power of 19 minus 2 to the power of 18. So, I want to find the value of this problem. So, for my solution, I'm going to start by rewriting my problem here. So, 2 to the power of 19 minus 2 to the power of 18. And... To start off, I'm going to rewrite 19 here as 18 plus 1. So I get 2 to the power of 18 plus 1 minus 2 to the power of 18. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m 
times a to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 18 plus 1 is equal to 2 to the power of 18 times 2 to the power of 1. And now I have this minus 2 to the power of 18. Now from here, because I have two terms that are the same, I can factor out 2 to the power of 18. So I get 2 to the power of 18 times, well, 2 to the power of 18 times 2 to the power of 1 divided by 2 to the power of 18 is simply just 2 to the power of 1, and negative 2 to the power of 18 divided by 2 to the power of 18 is negative 1. So I get 2 to the power of 18 times 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. And this is equal to 2 to the power of 18 times, well, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, so I get 2 minus 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 18 times 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 18. So I get 2 to the power of 18 as my answer. Now, there is actually another method of solving this problem. So going back, our, originally pro our original problem was 2 to the power of 19 minus 2 to the power of 18, right? And what we did was we wrote 19 as 18 plus 1. And we solved it by factoring out 2 to the power of 18. So now, what if instead of rewriting 19, I rewrite 2 to the power of 18 as 2 to the power of 19 minus 1. Now, the way I'm going to solve this is I'm going to rewrite 19 minus 1 as 19 plus negative 1. Now, I can still use that property that states that if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 19 plus negative 1, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 19 times 2 to the power of negative 1. So I can still do it. Now from here, my greatest common factor from these two terms is 2 to the power of 19. So I get 2 to the power of 19 times 1 minus 2 to the power of negative 1 which is equal to 2 to the power of 19 times 1 minus 1 half, which is equal to 2 to the power of 19 times 1 half, which is equal to 2 to the power of 19 times 2 to the power of negative 1. And 2 to the power of 19 times 2 to the power of negative 1 is equal to 2 to the power of 18.